Hello, my name is Jimmy Vegas, and in this mini tutorial, I'm going to show you how you can use wind zones in your game. So, I've got this scene set up here, nothing too spectacular. Uh, if we press play, uh, we can see that, yeah, it looks okay, but not a lot is going on in terms of animation or anything like that. So, as you would expect, if you were walking through this kind of place in real life, you'd expect a little bit of motion due to the wind. Now, with a terrain itself, you can actually go to the terrain, and on the settings over here, about halfway down, you'll have wind settings for grass. You can change this, so let's have this as 0 0.5, 0 0.5, 0 0.5, and pressing play will actually give you a bit of motion on the grass itself, but not the trees. So to actually bring in a wind zone, um, you can go to Game Object, 3D Object, and Wind Zone. And as you bring it in, you should see a little bit of change in your scene view. Everything should kind of shift a little bit. So you want to get this into position. So I'm just going to drag it onto the character. Zero out the position so as it's near me. And then unparent it. And I'm going to drag it just into position over here somewhere. About there. Okay, so the important thing to note with a wind zone is these settings uh, by default are fairly decent, but they don't represent entirely every single thing about a wind zone. So to give you an example of what this looks like now with a wind zone added in, it gives a bit of motion to everything, which is fine. So if we go back to terrain, back onto our settings, and change our settings back to zero on the wind setting for grass, it's worth noting that the grass will not animate. So a wind zone will not affect the grass on your terrain. As you can see, that is still motionless, but everything else on the terrain will move just fine. So let's put them back to, in fact, I'll have 0.25. So with a wind zone, uh, the main is obviously um, the overall strength of the wind itself. And to be honest, if you hang... Yeah, if you hover over it, it tells you everything. So if you were in a storm, you would increase this dramatically. But one thing to note about this, don't go over the top, because this will happen. It just looks a bit ridiculous. It's not exactly the most fantastic thing on Earth. So let's change this to 1. Turbulence. Now this is, um, I suppose the way to describe the turbulence is how random the wind can behave. So the higher this is, the more erratic your wind will be. So it will shake the trees around more than anything. As you can see, having that really high shapes them around a bit too much and looks silly. That combined with an increase in the main strength of the wind gives a kind of tunnel effect. So I suppose ultimately, if you're making a crazy game where things are being dragged into one position, this is where you would use the main and turbulence as high values. So the pulse magnitude increases, as you can see, further away. It's kind of got a bit more straight, but it's, it pulses more than anything. So again, you would have that as a high value if you were being dragged to one point. However, you have to note that the higher you take these values, the more distorted the game will become. And pulse frequency, as you can see, it increases the frequency of the pulse magnitude and just makes it bizarre. So decent settings, I feel, generally to give you gentle wind, is if you decrease the main to about 5, turbulence to about 0. Uh, sorry, 0 0.5, 0 0.5, and have everything else as 0 0.5. If you press play on that now, it should give you something kind of very gentle. So a nice summer's day just makes everything kind of happy and gentle, I guess. So obviously the higher you increase these settings, the more chance you've got of bringing in, for example, stormy weather. So let's increase the main to 2, the turbulence to 1, and keep the pulse magnitude and pulse frequency at 0 0.5. You can see that you're gradually bringing in a bit more turbulent weather, getting quite, not so violent, but increasing the turbulence then increases the strength in the wind. But at the same time, you would also have to remember to increase on your terrain the value of these figures here for the grass. So if we put this as 1, 1 and 1, you would see that the grass is also getting quite turbulent 
as well. So one thing to note is always keep your wind zone and the terrain values roughly in par with each other. That way you can create the same effect of stormy weather. So one last thing to add to all this is if we want, um, let's say, for example, a bit of wind noise, you would just drag and drop a wind sound onto the wind zone itself. Uh, keep play on awake, and I'm going to put the volume to 0 0.25. Now, the reason I've got 0 0.25 is because at the moment we have this set as a gentle breeze, so we don't want it too noisy. So hopefully we'll be able to see just a gentle breeze. That's fine. So the higher the volume, the more stormy. Uh, another thing that you could actually find wind zone useful for is if you drag and drop it onto your first person character or third person character, whichever you're using, and change it to spherical. Change the radius to something lower, let's say uh, two, and let's have the main as five and let's have turbulence as five as well. So press in play once you've got the spherical setting on means that only once you get close to things it will start affecting the um, the area. So we may need to increase the radius a bit there. Let's have that as five. So hopefully we should be able to see now when we press play. So it's not quite working. There we go. So we've got close to this bush and you can see it getting quite violent. So it's just a case of playing around with the size of the radius. As you can see, as you drag the radius out on the scene view, the um, foliage will kind of bend because it's being affected. It's within the radius of the um, wind zone. So now we've got it to 27, you can see that the trees and bushes right around us are moving quite violently. Well, not too violently, but the ones in the distance aren't. So if we move away from there and slowly move towards these um, trees here, the closer we get, you will see that they start reacting because we've gotten closer. So that's many different ways you can use a wind zone in your game. You can experiment as much as you want, and there are ways of allowing different objects to be affected by a wind zone using uh, some rigid body um, properties on each object. But I'm not going to go into that in this episode because generally you can do everything with a wind zone uh, as it is like this. So that's how you use a wind zone in your game. Thank you very much for watching.